On February 24, 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a military campaign that would make him the greatest Russian leader since Peter the Great. His bid to overthrow the Ukrainian government, flip Ukraine back into its former Soviet-era role as a puppet state, and hurl NATO back from Russia's borders would be Putin's master stroke after decades of cunning manipulation. One year later, Putin succeeded in being remembered for centuries to come, without any doubt as one of history's most catastrophic leaders. The Russian military has been broken on Ukraine's shield, proving it's nothing more than a paper tiger. Russia is so politically and economically isolated, it has slipped into a vassal state role for the clearly much more powerful China. And NATO's border with Russia has not just doubled, but in years will quadruple, as the entire alliance has affirmed that one day Ukraine will join NATO. At this point, you'd be forgiven for thinking the entire world was one huge simulation of a slapstick comedy. But with Finland's historic ascendance into NATO, how is the new vulnerable member of the alliance going to defend its 832-mile border with its very ornery Russian neighbors? Calling Finland vulnerable to Russian invasion is kind of a misnomer. Finland is armed to the teeth. It's basically the Alabama of Europe, except in Finland a first date typically isn't with a family member. The nation has one of the best militaries in the continent, and with a neighbor like Russia, it's no surprise. While Central and Western Europe were spending decades drunk off the Cold War peace dividend, Finland was sitting shoulder to shoulder with a neighbor that had already invaded it once on extremely flimsy pretenses in the 20th century, and which would threaten to do so again in the ensuing decades. Stop us if you heard this one before. But in 1939, the Soviet Union decided to invade Finland out of fears of its closer alignment with the West and a desire to reconquer provinces that Russia had lost after the collapse of the Russian Empire. To their credit, though, the Soviets at the time had a legitimate concern over German aggression and had at first offered that Finland cede or lease islands in the Gulf of Finland to better protect the approach to Leningrad, today St. Petersburg. The Soviets also offered to trade territory along the border near Leningrad, which was only miles away with territory further north, but the Finns refused, partly because the territory they'd receive in return was generally considered worthless and because after witnessing Stalin's purges and forced collectivization, the general opinion of the Soviet Union amongst the Finns was very poor. After the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which modern Russian schools either don't teach or deny as anti-Russian propaganda, the Soviet Union was emboldened to take what it wanted from Finland by force. When Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia were all forced to accept an ultimatum at gunpoint, allowing Soviet forces to be stationed on their territory, Finland read the writing on the wall and was already quietly mobilizing its military. A Finnish delegation was summoned to Moscow, where the two sides discussed the exchange of territories along with their shared border in order to meet the Soviet Union's demands for safety buffer for the city of Leningrad. On November 29, 1939, though, the NKVD carried out a false flag operation and shelled their own border guard post, providing the Soviet Union with the excuse it needed to launch a war. Its goal was to capture large swaths of Finnish territory, replace the Finnish government with a pro-Moscow one, and strengthen its border security against the West by turning Finland into a buffer state. Again, stop us if you heard this one before. Before the war started, Soviet military command expected complete victory in just a few short weeks. While some Russian generals thought that more military planning was required, the general opinion was the war would be over so fast that Soviet troops were cautioned to make sure they didn't accidentally cross the border into Sweden. With far superior numbers, equipment, and a horde of tanks, the Soviet Union was poised to trounce much smaller Finland. Seriously, guys, stop us anytime if you've heard this story before. The Soviet Union would end up victorious, albeit at a staggering cost to itself. Modern estimates place total dead for the Soviets between 50,000 and 120,000, while the Russian State Military Archive has confirmed 167,000 killed or missing. Between 1,200 and 3,543 tanks were lost, with the Soviet Air Force losing 1,000 aircraft. Putin, we mean Stalin, would end up winning large swaths of territory along the border, but the Russian Federation, we mean the Soviet Union's performance in the war was so bad that it lost significant international standing. Hitler himself allegedly based his decision to invade the Soviet Union just a year and a half later on the Soviet Union's performance in Finland, convinced that the Soviet military was corrupt, poorly trained, and ineffectual. Russia's performance in Ukraine so closely mirrors the Soviet Union's performance in Finland that even today Hitler's probably considering invading modern Russia from beyond the grave. Finland in return lost 25,000 dead or missing, with about 43,000 wounded, 20 to 30 tanks destroyed, and 62 aircraft down. 
Finland and the Soviets would go back at it again in a continuation war as Germany invaded the Soviet Union, and after World War II, Finland would adopt a policy of military neutrality in order to not antagonize the Soviet Union into a fresh invasion. However, even after the fall of the Soviet Union, Finland never forgot who its neighbor was. While the rest of Europe was slashing defense budgets, Finland knew that its national survival rested on its ability to resist a renewed Russian invasion. In order to avoid antagonizing Russia, Finland has, along with BFF Sweden, held on to its Cold War neutrality. While Finland has been a longtime partner of NATO, the nation would not consider membership out of fear of the atomic hissy fit that Russia would inevitably throw. This was prudent policy. And while a significant number of Finns favored joining NATO, the majority opposed any move to join the alliance, believing that they could maintain the status quo with Russia indefinitely. Then on February 24, 2022, Putin went full-on idiot, and public opinion on NATO completely changed. After all, if Russia was willing to launch a war to destroy itself against one neighbor, then why wouldn't it launch a war to destroy itself against Finland as well? Approval for the country's membership was quickly granted, not least of all because Finland would bring significant muscle to the alliance. And it's that muscle that Finland is planning on using to provide protection from any Russian aggression across its 800-mile border. Finland joining NATO is a strategic disaster for Russia. Not only does this double the length of its border with NATO, but it now places NATO troops and aircraft within striking distance of some of Russia's most important military facilities. From Finland, NATO militaries can strike at at least four Russian nuclear facilities, and most importantly, at the Russian Northern Fleet HQ in Sivromorsk in the Murmansk Oblast, which now lies barely 40 miles from NATO's new northern border. This is one of Russia's most important naval facilities, as the port in nearby Murmansk is one of Russia's few warm water ports, or ports that stay open year-round because the polar jet stream doesn't allow them to freeze during the winter. The Kola Highway, or R-21 Highway, is a vital link that connects Murmansk in the Northern Fleet HQ with the rest of Russia running down to St. Petersburg. This is the only major link Russia has with these critical naval and nuclear facilities, including an airfield for its strategic nuclear bombers. From Finland's border, the highway in the double rail link that runs alongside it is only between 20 and 50 miles away at various points, well within the reach of NATO artillery. After seeing the power and precision of HIMARS in Ukraine, Russia has big reasons to fear being hopelessly cut off from the entire strategically important Murmansk Oblast in case of war with NATO. Finland's air bases will also allow NATO to launch rapid strikes into Russia with little to no warning time. In order to avoid completely upsetting Russia, though one wonders why that's even a concern anymore, NATO has promised not to move additional troops into Finland or to greatly expand military infrastructure in the country. However, the fact remains that from existing facilities, NATO aircraft and ground-based long-range artillery like HIMARS, equipped with ATACMS, could strike Russian facilities and airfields while giving little to no warning to Russia and even less time for a successful intercept. In order to deter these strikes, a cash-strapped Russia would have to basically maintain 24-7 air patrols along this new border with NATO. And from what we've seen in Ukraine, Russia is unlikely to be able to do so. Not only is the Russian Air Force in a budget crisis, but its aircraft are in a maintenance crisis as well, with few experienced maintenance personnel leading to numerous accidents during the Ukraine conflict. Russian maintenance and logistics are so bad already that crashed aircraft in Ukraine have been discovered with sensors either in stowed position or with pins and covers still attached, preventing them from being used. To not antagonize Russia, NATO might have promised to not build additional facilities in Finland or move significant forces there, but the truth is Finland doesn't really need much more firepower to seriously threaten Russia on its own. The Baltic countries have famously been seen as a strategic liability for NATO given their small militaries and proximity to Russia, as well as the great difficulty in reaching them in case of a war with Russia. But Finland is quite the opposite. Finland brings so much firepower to bear, it's basically like Russia gave NATO a free and significant upgrade. The first threat that Finland faces from Russia is not a military one, but rather a manufactured refugee one. Russia has for years been weaponizing refugees in order to try to destabilize Europe. In Syria, it purposefully targeted civilians, both because Russia is an ineffective and morally corrupt military power, but also because it was attempting to create an artificial refugee crisis. Its constant attacks against civilians, including schools and hospitals, were not accidents or simple cruelty, but rather part of the strategy. Unsafe in their own cities, tens of thousands of Syrians fled the country, with most looking to enter Europe. 
Recently, Belarus began to offer flights from Middle Eastern and African countries, along with the promise of tourist visas for migrants. Once they land, they are ushered to the border with Poland, where thousands have gathered. Many have snuck through with the goal of getting into the EU in order to build a better life for themselves. In response, Poland is still constructing a massive fence along its border with Belarus. Now there are fears that Russia will do the same with Finland, and Finland's already in the process of building a massive fence along its border with Russia as a cautionary measure. But the twist is that now thousands of Russians are also attempting to flee Russia in order to avoid conscription, and many are looking to neighboring Finland. If Russia's looking to get rowdy though, Finland is more than capable of putting up a significant fight, long enough for NATO to respond and push the Russians back across the border without Finland losing significant ground. Unlike most other European countries, Finland saw a need to continue conscription even to the modern age. However, this was due to its neutrality and knowing that much like Ukraine, in case of a Russian invasion, NATO was unlikely to get directly involved. Now that Finland has the protection of NATO, it is possible that the nation will relax its conscription or do away with it altogether, opting instead for a smaller professional military force that can be rapidly bolstered by NATO forces. Today though, Finland still trains 21,000 conscripts every single year, who then rotate into its ready reserve of 280,000. Of this pool, 10,000 are called up annually for refresher training, and in case of war, Finland can relax its conscription standards and call upon as many as 900,000 military-age personnel, with at least some military training from their past service. Its active duty professional force consists of approximately 24,000 spread out across its Air Force, Army, and Navy. As of 2023, Finland has approximately 239 tanks, with 179 of them in ready status. Its tank forces consist of the German-made Leopard and are almost evenly split between the more modern 2A6 version and the still very capable 2A4 version. Currently, Finland lacks any mine-clearing Leopards, as they were all donated to Ukraine, but the nation is looking at either purchasing more Leopards in the near future or acquiring the American Abrams going forward. To support its infantry, Finland has a force of 212 infantry fighting vehicles, with half being Swedish-built CV-9030s and the other half being Soviet BMP-2s, modernized with new cannons, thermal sights, and even multi-spectral camouflage to help them hide from thermal sensors. In the wake of a global part shortage for Soviet-era equipment due to the war in Ukraine, Finland is likely to begin replacing its BMPs with Western-made IFVs, perhaps by acquiring more Swedish-built CV-90s or possibly American Bradleys. The nation operates a significant amount of Soviet-era equipment that it'll soon be looking to replace. This was due to its desire to placate the Soviet Union by opting to purchase military equipment from it during the Cold War over Western equipment. When you're stuck between two superpowers, it's prudent to make the one sitting directly on your border happy. Its ground forces operate approximately 400 armored personnel carriers, or battle taxis, all of Soviet origin. The MTLB makes up the bulk of these APCs and are mostly equipped with heavy machine guns to support infantry. However, a battle taxi's job isn't to provide direct fire support except in the case of emergency. Rather, it's meant to quickly bring troops to the fight and evacuate casualties. Their much thinner armor over even an infantry fighting vehicle makes them unsuited for lingering on the front lines for too long. However, the Finnish fleet of APCs allows its infantry great mobility, and their track design makes them perfect for rugged Finnish terrain, as Finland's main strategy to fight off a Russian invasion would be to immediately sever highways and other major roadways, tracked vehicles are a matter of necessity for a nation geared to fight an asymmetric defensive war against a far superior power. However, the nation still maintains a significant number of wheeled APCs as well, with nearly 700 domestic-built vehicles. These vehicles can help speed troops to various points on the front or help provide fast recon over roadways or some of Finland's flatter terrain. However, upon arriving at the front, getting troops to the actual fighting is best left to tracked vehicles or its smaller fleet of infantry fighting vehicles. Finland is also equipped with over 400 tracked articulated all-terrain transport vehicles, perfect for wintertime conditions when Finland could expect to be fighting Russia to a crawl along its rugged border. During the Winter War, a significant amount of fighting took place in undeveloped areas as Russia sought to pursue a series of disastrous flanking maneuvers on the Finnish defensive line at a great cost to itself. These tracked vehicles are perfect for resupplying forces in forests and even deep snows where the only other option would be to physically carry supplies on foot. Where Finland really shines, though, is in its artillery, with one of the largest artillery forces in all of Europe aside from Russia. 
This is of little surprise though, given that the nation was facing the prospect of literal hordes of Russian tanks and infantry and could not count on its air force to fly against the Russian aerospace forces and deliver ground fires. With about 650 howitzers, Finland's most numerous gun is the Soviet-built 122H63 with 474 in service. It's an old gun, dating back to the 1960s, but artillery is one of the few pieces of military kit that changes little over the years. Improvements in material science can make for more robust tubes, but as Ukraine has proved, even half a century old artillery is deadly. The 122mm H63 has a maximum range of 9.6 miles or 13.6 miles with rocket-assisted projectiles. However, as Finland integrates with NATO, it will be looking to replace its artillery stocks with 155mm pieces, the most commonly used NATO artillery piece. This helps simplify logistics and offers increased range and lethality over Finland's current 122mm stockpile. Finland already operates about 170 155mm pieces, upgrades over its Soviet-era stocks. Self-propelled artillery is very important on the modern battlefield, especially against such a massive artillery power as Russia. By being self-propelled, these units can shoot and scoot, loosing a volley of rounds before making a hasty getaway to avoid counter-battery fire. They can also move to unexpected locations to deliver devastating volleys before disappearing again. This is what made Ukraine's use of HIMARS so revolutionary, allowing the nation to quickly drive close to the front lines to deliver precision fire and then immediately get away before Russian forces can react. While Russia has claimed it has destroyed all the HIMARS batteries given to Ukraine at least twice over now, the US has confirmed that not a single one has been lost in combat yet. Finland, like most of the world, has its eyes on the HIMARS, but for now, the nation operates approximately 120 self-propelled artillery vehicles. Most of these are Soviet-era 122mm pieces, which Finland is even now replacing with 155mm vehicles developed by South Korea. South Korea is in the process of delivering a shipment of 48 used vehicles retired from its own military and 10 have been ordered on top of the 48 expected to be delivered by 2024, with another 38 and yet another follow-up order. The option for an additional 48 is still on the table, allowing Finland to quickly retire dated Soviet-era equipment while growing in lethality. Artillery is excellent for long-duration, sustained fire meant to destroy or suppress enemy positions, but rocket artillery combines lethality, precision, and speed designed to overwhelm an enemy force and strike so quickly that soldiers and vehicles don't have time to disperse or get to cover. Rocket artillery is best used against concentrations of enemy forces. Finland only operates about 54 MLRS systems, but its 35 122 Rock M1s give it a high degree of mobility comparable to the US-made HIMARS, albeit with much smaller unguided rockets. It does, however, have a small stockpile of Israeli-made Acular rockets, though it's unknown if these are guided or unguided versions. Its US-made M270s only number at 29, with 12 for driver training, but come equipped with the infamous GM-LRS rockets used by Ukrainian HIMARS and AT-2 rockets designed to disperse large amounts of anti-tank mines. An order for 70 extended-range GM-LRSs was placed in February, just in time for the Russian invasion of Ukraine but it's unknown if the order's been filled as of yet. Russian military doctrine states that its air cavalry must be ready to provide ground fire support for infantry within 15 minutes. This has proven to be a liability against a foe equipped with modern long-range precision fire, as the war in Ukraine has shown, and the absolute disaster at Chernobyvka, which embarrassed the Russians to the point of becoming a Ukrainian meme, further cemented this failure into the history books. Here Russian helicopters were shelled over half a dozen times, with the destruction of many helicopters that were simply replaced after each attack. But due to strict adherence to doctrine that states helicopters must be within 15 minutes of the front lines, the Russians simply kept repeating the mistake and fueling their own losses. Finland is fully aware of Russia's use of its helicopter fleet to support its infantry, and has invested in a large amount of short-range air defenses and manned portable systems such as the American Stinger. It has 36 wheeled short-range air defense vehicles, with each of its 16 ITO-05s complemented by four man-pad missiles to be used by the vehicle's crew. Eight batteries consisting of 24 NASAMS launchers protect Finland's capital region from air attack, but are mobile enough to be attached to brigade-level elements. A further 200 US-made Stingers are dispersed across its infantry, and soon Finland will field Israel's David Sling air defense batteries which can intercept everything from planes to drones to tactical ballistic missiles. In the sky, Finland has a small but extremely capable air fleet, 
having replaced its air inventory in 1995 with American F-18 Super Hornets. Given Russia's difficulties in the skies of Ukraine, even this small fleet would pose a significant challenge to Russia, especially as the F-18 can be equipped with advanced American radars and missiles. Unlike Ukraine's MiG fleet, which requires workarounds that often significantly reduce the capabilities of donated weapons, such as the HARM missiles donated by the US to destroy Russian radars. An F-18 is more of a match for anything in the Russian arsenal today and is perfectly compatible with future American air-to-air -air missiles such as the AIM-260, which allow Finland to strike first against any Russian aircraft. However, by 2026, Finland plans on fielding a fleet of 64 F-35s and if the F-18 is a match for anything Russia can put in the sky, the F-35 is basically punching down. Of significant concern to Russia is the prospect of having dozens of American-built stealth aircraft on its northern border, just miles away from some of the most important military sites. While F-35s are not invisible to radar, they are built to defeat targeting radar and significantly reduce engagement distances. With the long-range standoff weapon being developed in the US, expected to be delivered well before its 2030 due date. F-35s prowling right outside Russia's borders could be armed with weapons capable of delivering either conventional or nuclear warheads to targets as far as 500 kilometers. The Finnish Navy currently operates only a token surface combat force of eight missile boats and two mine layers. Its ascendance to the NATO alliance could open up options for acquiring larger combat vessels and even diesel submarines, but it's unlikely Finland will be interested in doing so. Given that its most immediate threat is a land invasion across its vast border with Russia, the Finnish defense budget is better served procuring land combat systems. The real victory for NATO, though, is access to Finland's coast, which effectively shuts Russia out of the Baltic Sea completely, turning any attempt to move ships out of St. Petersburg into a mad dash out of a firing gallery with anti-ship missile batteries stationed on both sides of the Gulf of Finland. With Sweden possibly joining NATO soon and access to Gotland, Russia's days in the Baltic are over. Finland is well suited to defend itself from a Russian invasion in the short term, with its military more than capable of slowing any Russian offensive to a crawl and buying enough time for a NATO rapid response force to enter the fight. Having prepared to fight Russia on its own for nearly a century, Finland is bringing a great deal of military expertise to the NATO alliance. However, Finland joining the alliance also gives NATO the ultimate high ground against Russia and will act as a deterrent against any Russian aggression against very vulnerable Baltic states. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania no longer need to fear a fait accompli attack by Russia, as had been a major worry of Washington for two decades now. Finland joining NATO is the single greatest national security disaster for Russia in centuries, as Putin has managed to undo 200 years of careful Russian military and political maneuvering to ensure Finnish neutrality. With the invasion of Ukraine, Putin has managed to put Russia at its most vulnerable position in modern history, as NATO forces are now mere miles from some of Russia's most important military and commercial facilities. With easy access to the R-21 highway, NATO can now cleanly sever Russia from the bulk of the northern fleet and access to at least four nuclear deterrence facilities. Putin's dream of being remembered by history is at last complete, as he'll surely be remembered as one of the most foolish, disastrous Russian leaders in the nation's history. And that is a list with some tough competition. Now go check out France's World War III plan or click this other video instead.